Hi, I'm Becca, and this is my husband, Gabe. That's me. Welcome to the podcast celebrating Jack Russell Terrier Dogs. And all the joys of companionship with canines of every kind. Each week, we'll explore all the heartfelt, humbling, and hilarious stories that only dog parents can truly relate to. We're Jack Russell Parents. Sit. Stay. Stay. No, sit. Stay. This is me every time I let Carson out in the backyard. He needs a little extra reminder to stay sitting until I am ready to open the door. I thought you were talking to me about like when it's time to eat dinner. (laughs) Well, sit, stay. (laughs) Well. Well. It still works. Well, Carson, I feel like he just stares at me saying like, like a what for when I give him commands. When you tell him to sit before he goes out. Yeah. Yeah. Or anything. <laughs> what you going to give me? Well, I don't know what to tell you, but I do have some super cool trick training advice to share with you today. Maybe that will help. But hey, if we're talking about puppy tricks, then we should probably share with you Carson's extensive list of tricks. Yes, perfect. So I happen to have a list of his tricks right here. What are the odds? (laughs) I I wrote them down. So it's kind of a long list. I'm, I'm proud to say. First on the list, of course, is sit. And I taught him that when we first got him and you were at work one day and I was working from home in those days. And I it, it only took a couple minutes to yeah. teach him. And I was so excited to show you when you got home and you like lost it because he was nine he was weeks old. Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Eight or nine weeks old. We had just brought him home. He fit in the palm of your hand still back then. So it was. And he sit. So, so that was the cutest thing in the world. <laughs> His other tricks include down. If I point my finger at him and say bang, he lays on his side. He also rolls over. And then he does what a lot of Jack Russells I've seen do. We call it chipmunk, where he raises up on his hind corners and his little little front paws are out in front of him. And I think of it as like he's the little chipmunk about to eat a acorn or something. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) But it's the cutest thing. And so when I trained him to do this... I was so excited when he finally did it. Like my praise was through the roof, right? I acted like a lunatic that <laughs> that that became his go to trick because he's like, she gets real excited when I do the chipmunk. <laughs> he yelled so loud the first time he ran through the wall and there's a shape of a dog in it, Stop. like a cartoon. <laughs> but anyway, so it's he, still his go to trick. And years mm-hmm. and years later, anytime he thinks you want him to do something, he goes straight to chipmunk. He's like, okay. He also spins. He can spin in both directions. He also does a great high five with either paw. Yeah, you could switch hands like if Mm -hmm. left, right, and like he'll he'll high five that hand. Yep. And then he also gives kisses. (laughs) Uh, My favorite is when he does it begrudgingly. Yeah. He doesn't want to give you a kiss and he has this kind of meh. It's not a, like a, a happy dog lick. Yeah. It's he's like, like Bleh. I'll do it if I must. <laughs> <laughs> then I also taught him to pray. If I say pray, he'll put his front paws up on the, the edge of the couch or the stool or whatever. But he kind of prays up towards the heavens. He doesn't know how to bow his head. I figured out he's how to get He's looking up for you to, to drop a treat that. in his mouth. <laughs> yes. I guess that's how most people pray. Yeah. Oh. oh sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then when we say the word peanut butter, he licks his lips. So yeah. we'll say, do you want some peanut butter? Want some peanut butter? And then- <laughs> Peanut butter. Every time you say peanut butter, he'll lick his lips. Every time. So when he's, you know, has a commercial career. Yes. That'll be a good command. We just tell the actor, say peanut butter. Even he'll if it's it. like for Hawaiian bread or whatever <laughs> commercial he's in. <laughs> yeah. He also knows get in your spot. There's a spot. On the couch that he, with a blanket. So he knows when we say get in your spot, that's where he goes. Sometimes when he goes out in the backyard, I don't particularly love that he goes, if he tries to go to the bathroom close to the patio. So I say, go out, go out. And he's like, okay. (laughs) He goes out farther. Um, He knows come and he knows stay. Both of those are problematic for most Jack Russells, I think. Yes. He doesn't always come and he doesn't always yeah. stay, but he knows them. If he's guarding something he stole, he will not come to you. Yes. And then he also, when we're playing, he does a few things. So uh, where's your ball? He'll go and get his ball or any toy. We kind of refer to all toys as balls. Although I know that you can teach them to identify certain toys by name. Then he has this really cool thing where we've, combined toys so if he's 
taken all the fluff out of one toy, that toy now is able to be tied around another toy. And so sometimes I can tell that he wants me to do something with a toy. So he'll bring me one and then I'll say, go get the other part and he'll go get another part so I can connect them. Yeah, we call them Frankenstein toys. It's a game that you and Carson invented and you showed it to me one day. I was like, oh, that's fun because he has a million parts of shredded toys as most right. Jack Russell's <laughs> parents have. Just this whole basket of pieces. So we combine them. He'll bring you pieces and sometimes they don't, they're not always compatible, right? They don't yeah, tie and I, together. I have to show him, look, buddy. Like I tap them together. I'm like, they don't go. I can't do anything with this. And then he'll, so he'll go get, get you another, another one. Part. He'll go get you a part that ties. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, the other thing with playing, a lot of times he has this ball that rolls under the couch and sometimes it'll roll through to the other side. And if I say it's on the other side, he'll go around the couch and get it. I hate, it's so weird that, oh man, the first time you showed me that too, I was like, wow, you just said the whole sentence. Mm-hmm. And you're not pointing to the other side of the couch. You just mm-hmm. say, it's on the other side and he'll go all the way around and get it. Yep. Also the, the infamous no touch, uh, which he fully understands, but does not always adhere to. Also, I'm working on leave it, specifically when we're walking down the street and he wants to bark at the large garbage trucks and everything that drives by, I'm starting to tell him, leave it. I pull just slightly on his leash and say, leave it. And several times he he gets all stiff and like he's going to give up a piece of his mind, but then he doesn't. And so then I give him a lot of praise. So we're going to continue to work on the leave it trick in other areas as well. And that's pretty much the whole list. But notice how quiet is not on that list. <laughs> be mm-hmm. quiet. He does not like to be shushed. He's one of those people that you like, you shush them and they get very angry. Yep. And so <laughs> yeah. every time, I, I'm not even joking. Every time I try to tell him like, no bark, be quiet. And, like, the more I say it, the more angry he gets. He always answers back like a disgruntled teenager. He does. He does. Those are Carson's super fun tricks. So let's make sure that we are rested up and ready to train because when we get back from this commercial break, we are going to teach you how to train your dog to do some super cool tricks. Aloha Mama Apparel wants to spread the spirit of aloha. Genesis Belot, the creator of Aloha Mama Apparel, was born on the mainland and resides in Southern California. But she cherishes her Hawaiian culture and honors the half of her family that lives on the island. She loves being a mama and a designer. At Aloha Mama, they know being a mama is hard work, but it's the best work. That's why they style mamas and kiddos in apparel that is bright and filled with beachy vibes. For the cutest casual attire celebrating the spirit of Aloha, go to shopalohamama.com. That's shop, A-L-O-H-A-M-A-M-A.com. Shopalohamama.com. Next up, some furry factoids about dog tricks coming at you from successdogs.com. They have an article called Dog Trick Ideas, and we have chosen three of the many ideas they have. And these fun ideas come with step-by-step instructions. The first trick is wait, or what I would call stay as well. But I think there is a difference. And so I'm con- as I'm thinking this through, I think maybe I should change my stay command to wait at certain times. So like when I have Carson sit at the door and I tell him to stay before I open it, but I think it should be wait. So I might change. Anyway, the idea of this trick is to encourage calm self-control in your dog by learning that he only gets a reward when he is calm and waits for permission. And then he will be focused and ready to learn. And this trick is visually pleasing to both the trainer and onlookers. The wait command makes your dog appear completely obedient and tuned into the wishes of your trainer. And it's useful, uh, again, as a prelude to something more complicated. For a simple trick to teach, the wait command is neat and effective and extremely useful. And again, dog trainers love this trick because it teaches a dog to focus and be controlled during training sessions or everyday life. 
And I like to use this for Carson, like I just mentioned before, right, like right before we go outside, whether he gets to go out f- for free play in the backyard or I'm taking him on a walk. And it really does help focus him. So how do you teach your dog to wait? By following these six simple steps. So I'm going to try to go through them quickly and succinctly. <laughs> One, you sit down in a chair and you ask your dog to sit in front of you. So they, I, they have to know how to sit, I guess, before you teach them the wait command. Yeah. So you sit down in a chair, ask your dog to sit in front of you. Number two, when your dog is sitting nicely, show him a treat and ask him to wait for it. Number three, slowly place the treat on your knee while your dog is watching you. If the dog moves or reaches for the treat, take it away very quickly and ask him once again to sit and wait. Number four, repeat the previous two stages as many times as you need until you can put a treat on your knee without the dog moving and trying to take it. Always use the word wait. So you're probably going to be doing this over and over again, getting him to sit in front of you and then not lose his mind when you pull out a tree. <laughs> <laughs> I see this will take a while for me and Carson to get down. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's the first four steps. Number five, eventually your dog will sit and wait despite the tempting treat on your knee. Often he will look you directly in your eyes pleading for the treat. And lastly, when you are certain that your dog is not going to move, you can give permission to take it and allow your dog to take the treat. So you have two commands, wait and take it. That's great. I don't always know what the release word should be. So it's great that they have it specific in here to take it. Pro tip, build the weight slowly. Start by asking the dog to wait for a few seconds before you release them with the command take it. And then as they build confidence, you can have them wait longer and longer and longer. Got it. That's awesome. So the next trick is, are you tired? Or I might say, Am I boring you? (laughs) (laughs) I think I know where this is going. That's my new phrasing. This command is used to provoke a yawn. The statement, are you tired or am I boring you, can give the impression that you are actually communicating with a sleepy dog. Surprisingly, this is quite an easy behavior to reinforce during dog training sessions. A dog may yawn during a training session if he is confused or unsure what to do next. I've seen him do that a lot. Yes, and I he does this especially when I'm out on the walks and I'm trying to get him to sit at the crossing of the street and he just <laughs> yawns and yawns and he won't do anything. I'm like, what don't you get? <laughs> I said, Carson, sit. Why are you confused? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I, I am fascinated to realize that that's the psychology behind it. This reaction is simply because yawning in the canine communication world is actually a calming signal which dogs offer when communicating with another dog or, in fact, any other creature at all, including human beings. So he's yawning to get me to calm down. He's like, <laughs> he's like, dang, lady, just chill. Chill out. I'll do it. I, do, if I understand what you want. I'll do it. He's giving me a signal to calm down. Dog trainers love the yawning trick because it is a great example of shaping a natural behavior to give the effect of cross-species communication. So to utilize this natural behavior of yawning, you will need to withhold a treat until your dog becomes confused on how they can get you to hand it over. So number one, stand or sit in front of your dog and then show them the tasty treat. Number two, Observe how they try to work out how they're supposed to get the treat, but don't allow them to take the treat from you. If they move near the treat, simply hold it out of reach. Number three, your dog will be thinking intensively at some point and will yawn because they're unsure of what to do. So the rewarding of the yawn is crucial. As soon as they yawn, you reward them. And you should probably give some kind of command, correct? Am I boring you? Yeah, I think you should say the words and give, and then give the treat, yeah. So you repeat the previous three stages, and then the dog will yawn sooner each time, and then you can use your command phrase over and over again. Oh, I see. So what they're saying is do that first part to get them to yawn regularly, and then you add in the command phrase yes. after a few times. Awesome. This next trick is a great one for Carson because he loves doing all his tricks in a row. So things like (laughs) sitting, lying down, rolling over, doing chipmunk, shaking your paw. It's quite an achievement, all of those tricks. Your dog deserves to take a bow. Taking a bow is a nice trick that you can ask a dog to do after performing any other trick or routine. It's easier to teach this with the aid of a treat to lure him into the position that you can reinforce. 
Dog trainers love this trick because it encourages intensive learning from the dog and also is a great addition to any other routine. The bow adds polish at the end of an already great trick. Teaching your dog how to bow is going to take some trial and error. First, you need to stand in front of your dog with a treat. When she's looking at you and in the standing position, place a treat under your foot. If she sits down, pick up the treat again and encourage her to stand. When you put the treat under your foot, your dog will probably attempt to tap your foot with their front paws or sniff your foot in order to encourage the release of the treat. This will put them kind of in a bowing position. When she does these things, release the treat by lifting your foot only if her rear is still up in the air. You're trying to encourage her to lean forward towards where the treat is under your foot. This is going to take some patience, but by waiting until she's completely in the bowing position, you'll be reinforcing the only position that you want your dog to be in for this trick. If your dog sits or lies down at any point, you need to pick up the treat or move away. This encourages her to stand and change it to the bowing position before the reinforcement of the correct behavior. When the position offered is ideal, introduce the command words like take a bow and stop putting the treat under your foot. Simply reward directly from your hand when your dog takes a bow. Gradually move further away from your dog so she can take a bow despite being far away from your foot, while also using the command phrase sooner until your dog can bow on command. Those are just a few of the tricks from the successdogs.com article, and you can find a link to the remaining tricks at jackrussellparents.com slash blog. With that, we will bow out for just a moment. It's time for Puppy Parent Replies. We asked other puppy parents, what is your dog's best trick? We posted in an all dogs group, and here are some of the replies from them. Joyce K says, I have two, and their best trick is that they exist. They make my life so much better. Aww. Aww, I love it. Michael A says, give me that remote. <laughs> I don't, does that mean the dog fetches it, or you're trying to get it back from them after they stole it? What, I, <laughs> Either way, it's tricky. Yeah. <laughs> Linda B. says, when I ask for a hug, he jumps on my lap and puts his hands around my neck. Oh, I wish. That's so sweet. One day. We'll get there. Rick H. says, mine tricked me into falling in love with him and making me want to live again. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. Oh, wow. Oh. Mm. Got me right so in the chest. happy. Got Aww. me right in the chest. That's really sweet. Tanya H. says, my girl can sit, shake, high five, lay down, leave it, and she can go up the stairs and then down the slide at the park all by herself, and she loves it. That's great. <laughs> Ken B. says, whining in four languages. <laughs> <laughs> Multilingual pup. Sonia B. says, we can jump rope together. Oh, that's cool. It's like those old-timey uh, TV shows or commercials that you always show that. It's usually yeah. a terrier too, right? It is. <laughs> Jumping rope with somebody. That's awesome. The next group that we posted in was a JRT puppy parent group. And we <laughs> Much got- Much cheekier responses. Yes, we got some silly replies. They get it. They, they know. <laughs> so Oscar D says his pup's best trick is same as our teenagers, selective hearing. <laughs> and Dave N says a similar thing. Ignoring me. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand that. Demetra D says, finding as many squeaky toys to play with as soon as I get into bed. Yeah, that's why we have a no toys in bed rule. Mm -hmm. Now, he has been under the bed on occasion and you're like, squeak, squeak under the bed. <laughs> it's usually with a new toy, right? He hasn't destroyed it yet. We made the mistake of giving it to him after 7 p.m. And <laughs> yeah, we paid for it. He's not tired of it yet. So Linda K says, stealing socks. Yes. That's a trick of Carson's, too. I think they're, that's in their DNA. <laughs> the little thieves, man. <laughs> Davlor S. says, he becomes invisible when I turn on his bath water. Andy B. says, pretending to want to go outside and then stealing my seat. Seven years, I've fallen for it. And <laughs> yeah, they also steal your spot, too. Mark E. says, Milo can dab and roll left and roll right. Plus, he speaks to people on the phone. Obviously, he doesn't speak, but he makes his own noises. Oh, that's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, we love hearing about your dog's tricks and or lack thereof. But we echo the sentiment from many of the replies that every dog's absolute best trick is making us fall head over paws in love with them. Thank you for listening. Until next time, this is Becca and Gabe, the Jack Russell parents. Say bye, Carson. (laughs) We'd love to connect with you online at jackrusselparents.com or on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at JRT Podcasts. That's at JRT for Jack Russell Terrier Podcast. The Jack Russell Parents Podcast is produced by Earball Audio. Jack Russell Parents is brought to you in part by Super Chewer. From the makers of BarkBox, Super Chewer is a themed monthly delivery of toys and treats made especially for dogs who play harder and demand a challenge. Simply go to jackrusselparents.com and click the Super Chewer link to enjoy their great offers while also supporting our podcast. Mm-hmm.